Look at that. Look at that skyline. Look at that backdrop. Beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Brother from another is here. We're here. This is Radio Row, the media center, downtown Phoenix, the convention center. And Michael Smith is here. Natalie, no <laughs> last name required, is back. We let you know today. Today we let you know you're going to be on the show. Yes. Yeah, a little more advance notice. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't learn until this morning that Michael Smith actually went to the media thing last night. Oh, he didn't tell you? Uh, night no, night. no, he didn't tell me. Like, the opening we, night. I was there. We, we kind of missed that. Um, I was probably in, in bed by like nine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did, my brother needs a nap. I need naps. I need early bedtime. I was wiped out. So uh, tell the old folks, Natalie, what was it like last night? Not, not only, if, so people know, found out yesterday, this is your first, first Radio Row experience. Yeah. And your first opening night experience first Super so, Bowl with you with your team first Super Bowl the Eagles are in it your Super team I missed yeah. them last night I wasn't there early enough to catch them but I was there for the Chiefs so give us some takeaways what'd you think it was not anything like I was expecting I mean it was mayhem honestly yeah. <laughs> it was massive so many people and as far as the media you know they had players and coaches sort of like in certain areas and it was just crowds and everyone's yelling out questions and at one point I was too short to even see anything <laughs> so I had to be really strategic about how I got in there so I got some video and pictures I didn't even attempt to ask questions but I saw you know the man of the hour Pat Mahomes and I um the Kelsey brothers their how mom was, he was walking? there how, how was how did Kelsey look Give some anecdotal. <laughs> I didn't get to see Patrick walk, so I don't know, you know, but he was jovial as always. You know, he's always like good spirits, so he was good. They brought out um, the Kelsey brothers, their mom, and, and she's, you know, she had a jersey where like she had one brother on the front, one on the back, and she's like, their plan is to just cheer anytime one of them has the ball. <laughs> yeah. So it was, you know, it, it was fun, and um, yeah, I mean, it was just, fans people were there they were excited i got a lot of videos so you know i'm going to be sharing it with our audience so they can see what's going on um but it was great that was my first time uh going to opening night so you know i mentioned yesterday this is my 11th super bowl week uh but i took a pretty big gap um between covering super bowls before last year um and I used to go to media day when it was on a tuesday and it was at the stadium and it was on the field right and that yep. was a scene Tuesday morning. It was even Tuesday morning. It was Tuesday wasn't it? morning. Yeah, right. this this new media op this opening night open to the public, people paying their good money uh, to to sit in the stands while we do our jobs. It's chaotic on the floor. It's chaotic in the stands. Yeah, it's it's quite the scene. Uh, so I just wanted to go, man. You know, listen, got young people all the time ask you. You're a professor. They ask me. I'm sure they ask you how to break into the business. Just show up. Half the battle is showing up. Show up. Just show up. So I just decided I just wanted to show up and see what was what. Yeah. It was definitely worth my time. It was definitely. You missed out, man. It was a nice. It was it a nice. It sounds like it. It was a nice it scene. It was like fun. It. I'm glad you guys didn't say it that way. You know, like you go to these, you go to some people go to these parties. <laughs> oh man, you missed it. Oh, you missed it. This happened. Like okay, all right, just tone it down. Parties. That that, yeah. used, that used to be my thing. You know, I used to do the Super Bowl parties. Uh, See, yeah. Nat, you should have been at the Super Bowl. Club. You should have been with me back in the day. Back in the day, your boy was in these streets. I believe and, it. In the Super Bowl. And, and, and his highlight, I think this is your highlight. Which one? Yeah. You got Aaron Rodgers <laughs> into a party. Aaron, like, Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers and Matt was like, What? Hey, so, yep. Can I, I can't story get in. Time. Oh, okay. And, and, I and Mike Smith that. was like, oh, okay, 12. This would have been you 12. Super Bowl 39, I want to say, in Jacksonville. Philadelphia. Patriots Eagles. Um, Super Bowl was in Jacksonville, though. Ugh. So yeah. that was tough. Or maybe that was, was tough. It Jacksonville. Sorry, sorry, Duval. No, 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 no. This Hope wasn't they don't Jacksonville. Do that again. No, I'm sorry. I just, this wasn't Jacksonville. You know why? I, I got my years wrong. Because Jacksonville was after the 2004 season. Rodgers wasn't in the league then. Okay. So this was a couple of years later. I forget right. which city it was. Indy. No, this was a warm place. Okay, it was a warm place. My, All right. It might have been Miami. Might have right. been Miami. Because Miami was after the 06 season, right? Right, right. Okay. Rodgers was in the league, but he wasn't a Prince. starter yet. The Prince halftime show. The Prince show. halftime show, right? Yeah. Uh, the Lovey Smith, Tony Dungy one. Okay. Somewhere. Picture it. Sicily, 1946. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so this was the ESPN party, which, which was pretty exclusive. It was on a Friday night, and even people at ESPN had trouble getting in. Okay? So... 
standing at the party, happened to be near, near the uh, entrance. Matt Castle and Aaron Rodgers can't get in the party. What? How is that possible? Right? I'm like, <laughs> come on. I got. They, they were me. They were me. <laughs> my, my plus two. Yeah. So so right mm -hmm. up there with beating Eli Manning in high school is getting Aaron Rodgers in the party because I could say I knew Aaron Rodgers win. I knew him win. And coming up, segue, Ooh. we'll be talking to perhaps Aaron Rodgers' future wide receiver. As Garrett Wilson joins the show. Oh, that's nice. That was pretty oh, smooth. That, that was smooth, nice. wasn't it? That was nice. That's right. why they pay me the big yeah, bucks. That's, yes. why, that's why. Garrett Wilson's that's joining the show. That's why you got to show up. That's maybe, why you got to show up. You maybe can the learn future to offensive things. rookie of the year, Garrett Wilson or New York Jets will be here. Uh, the reigning man of the year and my colleague at Amazon uh, Prime Video Thursday Night Football, Andrew Whitworth, is coming up in just a couple of minutes. And then our boy, Thomas Dimitrov, two-time executive of the year, former Falcons GM, he's going to be coming through. But right now, we, we're enjoying... Natalie enjoying her first Super Bowl experience. And you got to go to, I think, Natalie, you got to go to some parties this week. I, but, but I'm leaving and, Thursday night. So, so the, the, my point in all of that, though, I'm Michael, not in that exclusive club. I used to be in these streets on Friday, Saturday night. Playboy right. party, Maxim party. But now I got kids. I got a sweetheart dance to get to on Friday. Nice. I'm leaving Thursday night. So, and so, you, you're so not I can't have, take you to the party. I won't be at a But party. I'll see if I can get you on Oh, the you list, should but. go. No, no, no. Natalie, you should go. <laughs> no, this is important. And how, how many times can you say that I'm going to work, I'm getting paid to go to a party? You really get, like, that's part of the job. You're getting paid to go to a party. You can drink, you can eat, you can talk to people, and it's all for work purposes. And, right. the, and the people this you This is beautiful. I once met Regina King at a, at a Super Bowl party, which the was a, a joy. Um, it's, those are some great memories. I'm sure. I'll Some see, of which but... can't be repeated. Yeah, on I was going to say, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Some of which can't be. Playboy, Maxim, right. just, you yeah. know, take from that what you will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I'll see if uh, Mike Jones will let me tag along. We were together last night for a little bit. I was looking for you, but I didn't see you. He was uh, showing me the ropes, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. He, he was showing you the ropes as, as you. Now, you missed Philadelphia, and, and that's um, – that's my that's, uh, you know what? That, that's a good illustration. You miss Philadelphia because I think, and we'll talk about it later in the week, but I think a lot of people have missed mm. Philadelphia. They've that missed a them. They've nice missed bar. them. I have never, I've never seen a team. I'm not going to get into it now, but they won 84% of their games. I've never seen a team win 84% of their games be over, uh, underrated. Like, why, why is everybody... I shouldn't Who's say everybody? everybody. I shouldn't say everybody. Okay, yeah, don't right, do I that call thing. I call myself. Nobody's yeah, 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 talking no, no, no. about Jalen Hurts. No, no, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. Strike everybody. That. The bad. one person Strike I happened that. to listen to on the hey. radio this morning oh. as I was coming in, yeah. that person said this, so everybody's saying it. Old school. This Old one school. person on Twitter right. said this, so everybody's saying it. But wait a minute. It. Now, hold on now. Now, it's not everybody, as we see Andrew Whitworth, Whitworth coming up. You can't miss him. Can't. Big Whit. It's not everybody, but it's people who should know better. Okay. Brandon Ayuk should know better. Well, okay, right? Yeah. He should. Um, if you really take it back, Micah Parsons should know better. Okay, it's been a season-long theme in some uh, respects. Yeah. What was my man from the Giants? I can't even remember his name. Julian Love. Yeah, Julian Love should know better. This is not a, like, just a whole thing of, of the scheme. Oh, they got the right scheme, yeah. and Jalen Hurts, and they're going to be exposed. No, you got to recognize. You got to recognize what Philadelphia has done all year. And it's not accidental. It's not coincidental. Coincidental. You can break it down any way you want. If you're into analytics, if you're into the eye test, any way you want to look at it, Philadelphia measures out great. So you, you're not exactly like adding to the suspense of who you're picking by the end of the week. Oh, so I'm, I'm not sure yet. I'm still, I, I, I'm not <laughs> sure yet. You know, I got to go over third downs. Um, I'm going to go over special teams and you know, intangibles. I have a whole little intangible thing. So I'm not ready. Yet. It's only Tuesday. I, I haven't made up my mind yet. What you got, Nat, before we go to break? Just, you know, one of the constant themes, though, has been who they play. They haven't played anyone real. That's what people keep saying, which I don't agree with. This is ridiculous. But, people. you know. What people? People. Legal people. A lot of people. The streets. A lot of people. people in the streets. To the wrong the people. streets. The streets. We, we the gonna, comments the section. sports the streets. The commentator com streets. Yeah, the comments. The social media streets. Uh, we're going to hear from Andrew <laughs> Whitworth, uh, who, you know, still got a Super Bowl ring. He's, he, he's still a champ right now. Okay. Right. He's still a Super Bowl champ. And uh, he's also the reigning man of the year. He's going to be joining us on the other side of this break, live from Radio Row at the convention center here in lovely downtown Phoenix, Arizona. 
So um, our man Arian Foster has everybody buzzing about the script. You've seen this, right? Yes. The script. Um, but I don't know that somebody could have written a better script for my man Andrew Whitworth. Uh, my colleague, Andrew colleague. Whitworth, from Amazon Prime Video Thursday Night Football, who I've gotten to know quite well this season. Um, this time last year, Andrew Whitworth was capping his long and distinguished career with a Super Bowl championship in his home stadium as he's being honored as the Walter Payton Man of the Year. Against his former team. Against his former team. Then yeah. goes fresh off the field into becoming a broadcasting superstar. Just doesn't miss a beat. And here he is with us now on Brother from Another, my brother Andrew Whitworth. Talk that, about man. a script. That's the script right there. That, that's, that's, has, it, has it sunk has, what, this last year? Like now that you're back at the scene of the Super Bowl, you were going through it last year, I imagine it was a whirlwind. Has just this last year sunk in and how perfect an ending it was for you and a new beginning for that matter. Yeah, I think it really took until right now in the last month for it to really soak in because I went from all that happening and trying to figure out, man, what is going on? This is insane scenarios. Uh, then to win it, everything that goes with winning a championship and everything after it and then retiring, you have all these like, you know, you want to catch up with everyone and tell your thank yous and all these things and then jumping right into, hey, I want to go be an analyst and be on TV and traveling and all that stuff. Yeah. So right now this last month has been the first time like i've actually sat still for a second and had a chance to think about it so now it's a little bittersweet this week like yeah. the championship's over right yeah. it ends on sunday there's a new super bowl champion. To say, for now though you're still now, a champ right still, still, a champ. still this week i'm still walking around don't worry the ring will come out at some point this week but michael and i were having breakfast this morning and he asked me and a lot of people asked me about about the amazon crew about you guys and um i go down the list all the time and one of the things i said is that it's nothing like watching you and especially the guys who were recently retired you know tony is a little more removed yep but especially you and sherm and fitz walking around the field pregame and the amount of love and respect you guys receive from executives and coaches and contemporary players it just really speaks to uh why you guys were able to be so successful for so long um just the relationships uh that you guys that you guys built so um, I don't really have a question. I just want to tell you that. I want to tell yeah. you how much I, I, it was. It was fun to, to to get to to see the man behind the man of the year. Yep. Yeah, you I know? think that to me was really probably one of the parts I love the most this past season is that uh, I, you know talking about football and the game you love and all the X's and O's and what you think is going to happen is one thing, but being in the arena and seeing the coaches and the, and the GMs and the front office people and then the fans and just being in that element and getting a chance to just appreciate the game for mm -hmm. how big it is and yeah. just the entirety of it. And then also get to have those moments where you hug a GM or a coach who's like, man, I always believed in your, I remember you know sharing a word with you at this different yeah. event or different time in your career. Those moments were really special. And I think just a cool way to retire and then still be involved in a way to get to yeah. see everybody yeah. and have some of those kind of goodbyes and, and, and hellos to, hey, this is new now what you're going to do and I'm going to get to yeah. know you in this world. So yeah. I think that's been a lot of fun and get to do it with two other guys who fresh off the field yeah. made it even more exciting. And Mike, every yeah. time we'd have a meeting, we'd always have Witt give a speech. He would always speak last. Every, every meeting, uh, assembly, Difficult question. presentation. Anything somebody didn't want to answer. <laughs> Close it down. Hey, Witt, huh? you talk about it. Uh, what? Yeah. He, was, he, he, had to, he had to break us down every single time. You know, I, I wonder, though, hearing you say that about, you know, retirement and just – reaching out to people and hey thank you the people who reach out to you you got to get them back what was that like how long did that take i mean i just think about your career you, you had such a long career was it hey i got everybody back oh i forgot about this coach let me reach out to him like what how long did that process take and what was what was that process I think it's still ongoing. I mean, it's still, there's still people that like, you know, you, you don't necessarily can't remember every little person along the way that like, oh man, there was a special moment. I remember having with you early in my career or whatever, when I met you, like certain guys. And so I think throughout my time really traveling this past season and even now being here this week, this is the first Super Bowl I've really attended as a, as a player, not playing in one. I played mm -hmm. in two Super Bowls. And other than that, I didn't come to them. I, I, I just always was like, man, I'm going to wait until I have a chance to play in them. And so just being around this week, even right now, being here, you know, a day and a half, just seeing different guys giving a hug telling them you know you know guys telling you man i appreciated your career i appreciate what you did i think michael knows me well enough to know i don't i'm not one of those guys that assumes people watched or cared or whatever so it's been really cool to have some people that i look up to and always admired kind of reach out or take a chance to say hey man i want two seconds to tell you what i thought about your career you said you didn't attend 
Did you watch? And when you watched, oh, yeah. and, and so as you watched, what, what, what went through your mind? I think every time you get a chance to, to watch a Super Bowl, you, you put yourself in the moment and you dream about the chance you're going to have to be in it. And I think to me, that's why the greatest part of my Super Bowl story, you know, that I'll continue to tell is really one about, uh, I think it symbolized a little bit to me of what's important to me, and that's uh, who I am as a person and a man and, and as a leader, uh, not just to my friends and, and the people I care about, to people I don't even know, and to my own children. You know, losing the Super Bowl after the 2018 season, I've shared this story before, you know, walking off the field. I stayed, I said, what's up to Julian Edelman and Tom Brady and some of those guys, like, congrats, you're devastated. You know, I didn't think I, if I'd ever play again after this moment. I'm walking off the field and I look up, I knew where my kids and my family were sitting, and Michael, my, my middle son, is, is in pure tears. He's my football lover, passionate about the game, uh, and he's in tears. And I remember looking up at him, and in my devastated moment, you know, worked my whole career to be here, smiling at him and being like, dude, you got to put a smile on your face. And I flexed my muscles at him. Hmm. And I was like, flex your muscles back at me because I knew it would make him smile. And so I kept doing it. And I, didn't, I had no idea. I told this story, you know, for the NFL videos, and they actually had the video of me doing it. Uh, and so then we win the Super Bowl. And the first thing I did after we kneeled it and the clock was running out is I ran to the sideline, I looked up and I found him and he was already standing, both arms flexed, yeah. smiling down at me. And to me, like, that was what it's all about. I mean, I said that after that Super Bowl in 18, people made it, you know, I said, we're all going to die one day, but it's about how you treat people, how you do things, how you carry yourself that matters to me uh, the most, more than Super Bowl trophies. And that moment to me kind of felt like, uh, man, that's it. Like, you, you, that is what it's about, man. It's about my, ch my kids and how they see me live and how me see me struggle and see me have adversity and who I am in that moment. And I thought that was just such a great example and a great opportunity for me and Michael to share that. How old is Michael now? He's 10. He's 10. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this, this is all the time. That's right. That's right. It's just, <laughs> this and, is and what we got all the time. And then, in the meeting, and then you're like, oh, yeah. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, let's go. Let's go have a good show. Um, you, people like you who do the type of work that you do in the community and in the world to make this world a better place, you don't do it with recognition in mind. Uh, you're going to be a part of passing on the man of the year mantle uh, as part of the Super Bowl pregame show, just as it was for you. You got, we, we were standing there watching. I remember before we even uh, started working together, I met you. We had the Super Bowl last year and you're on, uh, what do they call a thing in SoFi, that big, the monitor. It's a, there's a, I think there's a lot of sponsoring. Uh, yeah. yeah we, we can't get into that because somebody will be mad. But we're watching, we're like, yo, how cool is that when it's just like you're standing there announcing and it's like you're in uniform, it's Super Bowl, it's your last game, and everybody's just cheering. It's like, wow, what a moment. But can you put into words mm. what, because it's, it's as prestigious, if not the most prestigious award that an NFL player can receive. Uh, can you put into words what that honor means? You've talked a lot about the championship, but the Man of the Year Award, what that means to you, given the way you like to live your life. You know, I think what's really important, I had an opportunity to do a Rams event actually yesterday um, for some of their suite holders and ticket sales and stuff like that. And, and a lot of our community people were there. We were talking about it actually like a year ago. Here we all were at this event. And uh, I thought was really cool last night even seeing them get emotional again about it is, is I thought like really you're a representation of – you know what's important and, and not necessarily just you as an individual and so molly higgins and, and our rams community team like it was the first thing that jumped out to me when i signed there in 2017 is that this wasn't about marketing this th like they truly cared and it was really about how can we make differences in la because you know what will that lead to marketing will that people lead to people being rams fans sure but more importantly it's going to put people on their own feet supporting themselves and how can we do that together and molly and i just hit it off that way and i would call her you know we talked last night like the first time i did gray street elementary it's like i called her and i was like listen i just had an idea one time in cincinnati i gave up bikes for christmas i want to show up to a random elementary school you know pick something near sofa and let's let's go get six seven hundred bikes I, I don't care how many kids are there let's just do it and she literally went and got semi trucks and everything else. And we filled these bikes, these things up, showed up at Grace Jail Elementary and gave out the bikes. But at the same time, it was crushing to sit down with the principal and the, and the police in that area and then be like, hey, listen, this is awesome you're doing this, but we don't even know if these kids can get home with these bikes. Mm. Like somebody's gonna take them probably. So mm. we can't talk about it. Let's just keep it quiet. And like, I was like, man, that's exactly what wow. I wanna do in the first place. But it was also like so disheartening. Like, man, all mm. I wanna do is do something to encourage them. Right. But to realize that's their world, right, that they're living in in that moment. And so how can I get more involved? And I think that only inspired me to like, hey, this ain't a one time thing. We're coming back. And five years later to stand up there as Walter Payton Man of the Year was really cool. 
But what was more cool is the 40 something charities that I was a part of. Not not one thing, but just all the different ways I got a chance to be a part of that community yeah. throughout my career. A lot and of also people in Cincinnati. Award, basically. Yeah. And yeah. so there's just a lot of people that represent what that award is to me. Yeah. And it's a lot of emotions involved. And so that's what makes it so special to me. And what, where I, what I'll really remember from it is all the people that are represented in that award. That's awesome. A lot of it is your heart. But who, who gave you a heart for it? Who gave you the, the guide, the, the push to do that? Can you go back to that first moment? Maybe somebody, maybe it was uh, in your family or somebody in your career that made you say, oh, wait a minute, I could do more than this. I think really, um, not necessarily that she was a community servant. My grandmother was one and, and really involved the community. But I really was not at the age when she was young enough where I could watch a lot of that. I got to hear about it a lot. But I think the greatest thing I realized from her is when I would go around, she lived in a different community than me, but when I would be in her city in Bastrop, Louisiana, or in my hometown in Monroe, Louisiana, or West Monroe, I would hear stories from kids. They'd be like, man, your grandmother, you know, older people would come up to me like, your grandmother, man, I, I live down the street. Her door was always open. We all went in there. Every one of us thought we were the her favorite kid in the neighborhood. Hmm. Every one of her kids thought they were her favorite kid. And then all my cousins and friends, she had an ability to make every single one of us his cousins. We were like, oh, yeah, yeah I was, I was Memo's favorite. Hmm. And we'd argue about it. And it's like, I realized like how special that was to be able to actually take the time to make each and every individual that meets you feel like they're really special to you and, and get a feeling from you that you truly care about them. And I think I took from her that ability to have empathy. You know, there's, there's a little bit easier to have sympathy. Like anybody can have sympathy for somebody. Like I feel sorry for you they're having to go through that. But to see somebody go through something and go, man, I, I feel the pain and I want to stop it. You know, I want to stop the pain you're going through and mm. find a way for you to feel good. Not just so I can feel good, because I want you to feel good, and that'll make me feel good if you feel better. And so I think, to me, that's really what it inspired me to do more of. So we talked about the ride that has been for you since you uh, retired um, and you left on such a high note last year. How would you describe the last year for the Rams, whether Sean McVay in particular, Matthew Stafford in particular, because it's a pretty rocky road, and, and it looked like, Sean wasn't going to be there after this past year. State of the Rams franchise in the, in the last year since they won the Super Bowl. Humbled. I mean, I mm -hmm. think that, you know, it was a humbling experience. Obviously, there's reasons, right? There's injuries. They're not playing as well as you did coming off of a Super Bowl. I mean, we saw Cincinnati start the season struggling, you know, but they stayed healthy enough to get themselves back and going again. But the Rams really started from week one losing people, and it never stopped. And so I think, you know, you look at them, I think they're humbled. I think that they sit back and go, hey, you know what? Success is awesome. It makes you confident. It makes yeah. you sometimes reach out and have more success than you've probably earned. Uh, but then when you lose, sometimes you reach too deep, too, and you blame yourself for too many things. And so I think they're trying to find – what it is that drives them? What's important to us? What are our values, our cultures? Well, let's get back to that and make yeah. sure that that's what we're about each and every week. And I think they're going to find that. they got some special guys in that locker room. And uh, I just I, I would be crazy to think that, that Sean McVay and, and Matthew Stafford and those guys and Cooper Cup and Aaron Donald and them, if they're back and they're all together, the special guys as they are, they'll find a way. Special guy right here. We could talk to you all day. we got to let you go. you got a busy schedule. But before we do, can you tell us about what we got here uh, this, from, from Fisher Price? Yeah, this is the Little People's uh, Super Bowl champion, 57 champion uh, collector set right here. So you got the Eagles and Chiefs, and uh, people can go to MattelCreations.com and buy whichever team they think is going to win the Super Bowl. It's 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah. If you lose the game, you pick the wrong team, you get your money back. Okay. So it's only for the people that want to collect the winner. And uh, you know what? I don't know. As analysts, we reach for everything. I think all of us are guessing at some point here or there because we're not in those locker rooms and we're not in those meetings. So it's a little bit of a hunch, sometimes some knowledge. But if it means <laughs> anything to you, the Eagles fans right now are leading in pre-orders for okay. Super Bowl championships okay. with the Little People Super Bowl champions collection for Super Bowl 57. So the Eagles right now, 64% beating the Chiefs. So I don't know. I mean, I, who knows what you bet off of, but here's now. another all thing right. to throw in there, all right? I, I, we need I don't know gift. if it's analytics, but it's close. We need some gift ideas, so thank you for that. Hey, That's man, it, man. Appreciate, appreciate y'all. Good to see you, man. Yep, thank, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Good to see you. Andrew Whitworth, man of the year, and I'm telling you, real deal. I got to see it up close this year. Rex with the Jets. Ready to do this? I'm ready. The New York Jets select Garrett Wilson, wide receiver, Ohio State. All right. You guys. And, uh, the fact that they, you know, took a chance on me means everything. Yeah.
Coming into the game, he's only 55 yards away from having the most receiving yards ever by a Jets rookie. Well, he's got it now. We've got it. You know, being a young dude out there, I feel like I'm, I'm learning every snap. You know, the better days are coming, and, and we, you know, I'm, we took a step from the year before this one, and we plan to do the same next year. You know, so. Um, I mean, we know we know what we were brought here to do, and that's produce and, and make a difference. And uh, you know, we all take a lot of pride in doing that. Um, and you know, like I mean, given we did take a step, you know, we still feel like we could have, you know, made something more um, of this season. And, and to have another opportunity to do it next year, you know, we feel like we're going to take full advantage. That, of course, is uh, Jets rookie wide receiver. Well, not a rookie anymore. He just finished right. his rookie year. Uh, Stud wide receiver Garrett Wilson, who's making the rounds here at Radio Row. Uh, we hope to have him momentarily, and, and uh, when he's ready, he will join us uh, in progress. But um, he mentioned the better days being ahead for the New York Jets. That, of course, starts and ends with the quarterback position. Uh, I haven't seen this yet, Michael. Uh, right. I, just got, I just got the alert. Um, but apparently Aaron Rodgers says he will make a decision uh, on his future after a four-day uh, darkness retreat. So I think he had the astrological love, hey, uh, listen, man. love yourself session. Hey. And now he's going on a darkest retreat and decide about his future after that. I know we're going to talk with Garrett Wilson. I know we're going to talk about the Jets. Can I just say Aaron Rodgers has some of the most creative <laughs> phrases? Like, not even phrases, like routines. Yeah. Routines. Like, yeah, I'm going to go. A darkness? I mean, is, he, <laughs> is it literally a, a darkness retreat? Is yeah. there? Because there's such a thing. Okay. Now you can look this up. He brings up stuff like, oh, I didn't know about that. <laughs> and then you, you look into him like, okay, I guess that's something happening. He always is, you know, comes up with things that, that really haven't crossed my mind before. Um, Does but, it take a dark look? With all due respect. With all due respect, too. Yes. And, I mean, and that's not, here comes the disrespect. With all due respect. Yeah to his process and to what a monumental career decision this is. Right. Does it really take a darkness retreat? Yo, we live on the air. Hey, man, on TV, <laughs> man. Like, this dude, like, rolling up. Who's this at? Hey. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, wait, I, wait, know, I know. I know you're special. Come here. Come, I know come you're very back, special. Come back, come back, I know you're special. You got to come back now. We you know you're come, a special <laughs> talent. You gotta come there he is. <laughs> that was the best moment hey, in the show he's history. Like, that was the best moment in show history. And, but that's, uh, that's going to show what family we are. He's like, oh, I, I mean, don't care. He just rolled uh, up. You're looking good, man. You didn't know. Like, can I give you a hug? Uh, of course yeah, you can. Like Come on. Yeah. Yeah. We can do the whole thing. Yeah. Thomas Dimitrov is, is joining us momentarily. We were trying to hold this spot for hold, – hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So are we, are we, are we still – so Garrett Wilson, is he, is he going to join us later on? Okay. Later. So, okay. We'll Come on, Thomas. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's make some room Come for on. you. Live TV. Right, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll do it live. Yeah, we'll do Hold it on. live. You're going to be right you there, Thomas. You yeah. stay right over there. So I'm going to get – I'm going to slide over this way. Yeah. And then you guys are going to slide next to me. I love this. This is brother from another. <laughs> yes, See that? sir. Hey, Thomas, you asked me about the show. Like, what's this show that you and Michael Smith do? Yeah, you're getting it. This is it right here. This is the spirit of it. Like, it's, this is, yeah, this I is, love and, it. and you can Thomas appreciate just, it. You he, can appreciate it because he, it's authentic. It's authentic. It's authentic. That's a, but that's, that's what I know family that's does. I know that's important to you. Authenticity. Jeez, I can't believe I did that. That was awesome. Here we go. Come on, Eric. Hey, let's make some more for Eric. <laughs> Thomas jumping the gun over here a little bit. I saw you there. I'm like, why are he you He was so excited hesitating? to see us. I was. He was so excited to see it. That was great. And it was like, and, and it wasn't off to the side. It was right in the it was middle. It right here. It was right in the you middle. You rolled up right on it. You just want to show off that fancy I, I, jacket. I understand that no one's going to come calling me again. You're, no. You got to tell all your people. Live TV. Yeah. That's, 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 that's what it is. Trust me. You guys me. look good. Hey, likewise. The stuff, the stuff we've done hey. on live television, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. It is good <laughs> to right. see you guys. Oh, uh, my Two time formal introduction. Two-time executive of the year, former Falcons general manager Thomas Dimitrov, who is now the CEO at Sumer Sports, joined by Eric Eager, correct? Yep. yep. Uh, the v VP of Research and Development for Sumer Sports. You also may be familiar with this work from PFF, a Pro Football Focus, prior to Sumer Sports. So we'll talk a lot about what you guys are doing, talk about this, uh, this matchup. 
But uh, just we were in the middle of, a, of an Aaron Rodgers conversation. Yeah. You know, it's all good. It's perfect timing because, you know, listen, if, if, you're, if you're Joe Douglas, you got a decision to make. Yep. If you're Brian Gutekunst, you got a decision to make. Two guys who you probably know very well, mm -hmm. not just as colleagues, but from your podcast series, The GM Journey, which was excellent. So your thoughts on Rodgers as he makes his decision, how the Packers uh, should be playing this as it relates to whether to turn the page to Jordan Love with all the cap ramifications involved there, or even the Jets for that matter, looking for that quick fix at quarterback. Look, I, I think I'm just concerned, like you know, what Brian has to do and what the Packers have to do is they have to look at not just Aaron as a player, but Aaron as a leader. And, and that can be argued every which way, right? Is, is Jordan that leader that you really need and, and, excuse me, you need it or that you want? Is he truly that? Because coming out, there were some concerns about how that was all going to play out. Mm. So where is that? How does that play out? That's a big thing in my mind. But, but then you also think about Brian being thinking about how many more years are we, are we anchored into this contract? That is a complicated spot for them to be in in Green Bay right now, I think. It's not that easy. I think Aaron Rodgers is one of the very best quarterbacks that has, been, that has come through. I really do. And I still think that he can play. But he has to want to play, and that's what's still that's not what I'm really sure of. Mm. And how much, how far is Brian in on that conversation with him to determine whether he truly does want to play or not? Eric, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, when you're a quarterback that makes as much as Aaron Rodgers does, you have to be of that Mahomes tier and elevating the players around you, right? The way that the salary cap works, whether he goes to the Jets or stays in Green Bay, he's got to make the players around him better. And I feel like over the last you know couple of seasons, he went from a guy who elevated the play of those around him to somebody who was kind of a maybe a bystander in his own football life last year. And I think that, you know, if you're the Packers, do you really want to buy into that another year? Or do you want to, you know, start anew and, and take your lumps next year in an NFC that's not as hard uh, and st see if Jordan Love can be that guy? Because that's just the hardest thing with the economics in the NFL. If you pay your quarterback that much, he's got to be worth more than one player. Okay, that's right. But, Thomas, I'm wondering for you, because of those, because of that payment, you got a guy like that. And you've had guys like this who make a lot of money. So you're dealing with that player and that player's desires and opinions. Yep. You're dealing with an owner mm -hmm. who's got opinions. Well, I'm paying this guy this much money. We got to do this. And you're dealing with the rest of the roster that's watching you to see how you handle this situation to make sure there are no prima donnas, to make sure there's not a double standard. How do you manage how do you manage all that? That's a lot. That's a lot to manage. And you have to have a presence, I think, as a team builder to make sure that you're doing the right things ultimately for the team, right? And, as, and yes, it is about winning. We know that. But if, if it's in any way um, uh, stating, uh, excuse me, sending a message to people within the locker room that that's how I'm going to be treated uh, when my time is up, given that much time that, that Aaron Rodgers has put into this team, then it has people back on their heels. So this is this is complicated, not only from Brian Gutekind's standpoint, from the coach's standpoint, of course, from, from Mark Murphy's standpoint. Mm. I mean, here's Mark as a president, right? Trying to decide what's he saying in all of this? How is he pushing his guys to make the right decision on it? I, I don't know, it's a, it's a complicated situation. Hey look, Aaron Rodgers, even though he's got 60 million reasons to play, uh, he may decide not to play after this darkness retreat that we were just talking <laughs> a about. A darkness retreat. Uh, Thomas, see, Thomas knows about a That's lot of true. stuff. You might Thomas know. knows stuff that I don't That's know. He always point. teaches me stuff. You're a pretty cultured individual. So, you, have experience. you ever heard of a darkness retreat? That's what Aaron Rodgers says. Is he's he going, in the middle of is it? Is he just he, watching the he, film from he's last night? He's going to decide his future after he takes a darkness retreat. A darkness wow. retreat. Is that is that sans any sort of extracurricular? See, I was wondering if it was oh, literal. No. Is, it, is it like Alaska? You know, you have six months of <laughs> <laughs> darkness and six oh, months no. of light. I don't know. Or is it just like I mean, he's living in Green Bay? It's not that far from. <laughs> oh, you got them oh, all. Right, right. You yeah. got, I love them. I love them. <laughs> he's on. Great yeah. lines. Yeah, well, I don't know what it is. I okay. don't know literally what it is. I could imagine, given his playing around in that sort of a world. Maybe it's something. I, I, what was he saying? He was trying last time. Peyote. Oh yeah, yeah. That's it. He yeah he was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not. Well, I don't even know. What it, went, it wasn't peyote. It was something else. It was something else. It was, it was some other mind-altering yeah. mind thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, what I was going to ask you about is no another, judgment, though. No. No. No judgment, not. right? Uh, yeah. an another guy who has called it a career. So we believe he seems to be serious this time. Uh, we heard uh, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady give each other their flowers last night on his Let's Go podcast. You obviously was the director of college scouting uh, for the New England Patriots. Tom Brady meant a lot to your career. Um, just wanted to give you a, an opportunity to kind of 
summarize his career, if, if that's even possible, well, <laughs> in one sitting. In, in, in one sitting. Yeah. Look, I, I mean, he was a guy that was such a gauge and a, and a benchmark for me going into my time, not only as a personnel director with Scott Pioli and, and Bill being there, but then moving on to Atlanta and being able to utilize Tom as such a foundation to, to grow, like to look at and to build off of in my mind. How, what, what we needed to do with Tom, uh, what we needed to do with Matt Ryan after spending that time with Tom Brady. I've said this to you guys, I think both before. I mean, Tom, Tom Brady literally was the reason I got my job in, in uh, Atlanta, right? I mean, literally, I mean, a guy winning as he did, one of the main reasons. But in the end, and I, and I love Tom, but I was also fired probably because of Tom when we <laughs> lost the Super Bowl in 16 ultimately. So I have, great, I have great respect for him and what he's done for the league. He's, he's just at, at so many levels, right? I love it because I think the other thing is that I think it makes people believe that you can find that quarterback that you can continue to grow with and grow for many, many years if, if possible. And if you can get a guy that's mindful of his money, that's very rare in today's world, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's a, well, I think that that's the, that's the thing that they're seeing in Kansas City. That's what Tom Brady sort of, you know, he gives you the art of the possible at quarterback because, you know, Patrick Mahomes' deal, they had the SI article about it, very team-friendly with the rolling guarantees. Obviously, they're taking care of him as a $500 million player, but the, the rolling guarantees, being able to build a roster when you're post-rookie quarterback deal, like, that's just really hard to do, and Tom Brady sort of showed the blueprint for how to do it, and, and you know, his seven Super Bowls are what those guys, you know, the, the Herberts and the Mahomeses and the Burroughs and, and the Allens, that's what they're shooting for, and, and he's the blueprint. He's the art of the possible for them. You mentioned team building um, tell it we and we talk privately about this with you and just how you're doing and how you're uh, integrating yourself and how things are coming along but just tell us and the viewers about what sumer sports is doing and what it's bringing uh, to NFL teams uh, to help them get to that next level when it comes to the team building process you know, I, I guess if I could just start this way I mean you could we could bring 32 general managers in here right now right and you guys know many of them and we could ask them point blank and they would all say Roster building and team building is such an, a non-exact science or an unexact science, right? It's, 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 there's a lot of guesswork in it, as much as we don't want to tell our owners when they're paying us four, five, six million dollars a year. There's a lot to it. There's an element to Sumer Sports, which is a, which is a cutting edge uh, algorithmic based tool that's going to help teams optimize their roster. We look at it as it's it's an augmentation tool, though. It's not black box, and I'll, I'll toss it over to, to, to Eric on the specifics of it. But from a GM perspective, I have always thought there's got to be a better way for us to pick these players and bring it together and make a decision on your roster that's more scientific and more mathematic and more exact, right? Because we too often have just kind of thrown darts. Mm -hmm. on, and and I, don't, I, I don't say that uh, disrespectfully to our trade because we all work really, really hard. But I, I do believe you take a tool like what, what Sumer Sports can offer it's called Marvel, Maximize Roster Value, and you, you augment these guys. I think it takes a, a, an average GM to a good GM and a good GM to a very good GM, and quite honestly, a very good GM potentially to a Hall of Famer. I wish that I had it. People often ask me, well, would you have made that move for Julio back in 11? Yes. Yes, categorically yes. <laughs> there it is, come on. Come on. Now, now <laughs> yes. Michael, but my other question is, they also, I say, however, would I have changed my approach to that third contract that we gave Julio? Maybe this would have presented something different that I would sit down with Dan Quinn and Arthur Blank and say, all right, here's, here's, what, here's what Marvel, here's what Sumer suggests in that, in that mode. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many... Football is such a, a, a game of where there's specializations, right? You have scouts who have been honing their – I mean, you were a scout pr prior to being a GM, and, and – you know, you have that, and we want we want to you know respect that subject matter expertise. There's you know the the algorithms that'll build college to pro models and that kind of thing. And then there's you know the coaching aspect of it, where you know they play this scheme, and so you're going to have to have this kind of tight end instead of that t kind of tight end. And the, the when you add it all up, it's just really hard to put all those things together with the human mind at once and, and make something that is optimal. And so what we want to do is respect the subject matter experts. We want to bring in the grades that the teams have. We don't want to tell them necessarily how good a player is. What we want to say is, if you think this player is that good and this player is that good, here's how to build a roster that's optimal based upon you know their their constraints. And you have constraints that are you know not necessarily your own. Like your owner might say, hey, you're signing Daryl Revis no matter what. So then you have to live within those. And obviously the power of math can help us do that more quickly and maybe more efficiently than we just can do kind of like on our own. That's cool. Fascinating that stuff. That sounds cool. Listen, it? Sounds like you went from being a GM of one team and now you can be the GM of 32 teams, sort of. You know what I'm 
I'm saying? Well, that's an interesting <laughs> one. I like that. Look. That's that's we good. We can help all 32 teams be better. We appreciate you, man. Thanks for making our show better. Yeah, thank you so much. Always good to see you. Always appreciate it. Thanks for and listen. Thanks for the dramatic entrance. That's like, yeah. but that, it, it's, so, want, it's so it's so appropriate. That's it's so appropriate. You're show. unlike anybody else, so you got to come in in oh, a different man. way. I love you that. looked up at me and you thought, "Whoa!" I was like, <laughs> "I was like, he's about to walk in front of the camera." Come out the front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's about well, one of your associates ran in there to get us, so I thought we were on. So we were you guys had already started. Yeah. In my mind. So, anyhow, I apologize no, no, all no, your no, staff. No apologies De- necessary. Th- that's definitely their fault. It ain't true. You're yeah. good. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good Thank to you. see you. Thank you, Eric. We'll be back Thomas. in Phoenix. Good to meet Thank you, man. You. <laughs> Garrett, it's Rex with the Jets. Ready to do this? I'm ready. The New York Jets select Garrett Wilson, wide receiver, Ohio State. All right, he's got it. And, uh, the fact that they, you know, take a chance on me means everything. <laughs> Coming into the game, he's only 55 yards away from having the most receiving yards ever by a Jets rookie. Well, he's got it now. With that. You know, being a young dude out there, I feel like I'm, I'm learning every snap. You know, the better days are coming, and, and we, you know, I, we took a step from the year before this one, and we plan to do the same next year, you know, so, um, I mean, we know, we know what we were brought here to do, and that's produce and, and make a difference, and, uh, you know, we all take a lot of pride in doing that, um, and, you know, like, I mean, given we did take a step, you know, we still feel like we could have, you know, made something more um, of this season, and, and to have another opportunity to do it next year, you know, we feel like we're going to take full advantage. A big reason why brighter days are ahead for the New York Jets is this man right here, Garrett Wilson, who you just heard from. Now he joins brother from another. Uh, they got a stud receiver. They know that much. They got a, they got a, a lockdown corner. Yeah. They got a stud receiver. They got a running back coming back. Yeah. They got a defense. It's a hell of a draft. Man. I mean, I'm telling you, for that the Jets. Draft, they got a just tough back to follow with that draft. Start with the 10th overall pick right here. And uh, potentially offensive rookie of the year talk about brighter days Thursday might be your night uh, how excited are you how how much would it mean to you to be named offensive rookie of the yeah, year yeah I mean just to be nominated is uh, is huge for me you know this is something I would dream you know as a young kid that I would be in this position and I'm here right now you know and it's really exciting for me and uh, you know being able to go to the honors that that's enough for me if I end up you know walking out with some hardware that'd be a, a blessing on top but uh, yeah you know, like I said, I'm really just excited to be here and, and be, in, uh, be involved and nominated with, with Brock and uh, with Kenneth Walker. So, um, yeah, man, I'm excited. Well, like most stud uh, wide receivers, you are a man of style. I was admiring your glasses, your frames that. earlier. Uh, you're going to kill them on the red carpet if nothing else, I'm gonna right? I'm going to try. I'm okay. going to try, bro. I'm procrastinating. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I've been procrastinating, so I got to get on it late and, and figure out what I'm going to wear. But uh, I'm going to pull it together. Oh, man. I mean, and I know you've been asked this question a million times, and I don't want to steal your thunder because this is a son of Akron, Ohio here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. What's in the water, dog? Because, you know, <laughs> oh, you, Chris Olave. It's different now. I mean, what, different. What, what's in the water, bro? Yeah. yeah in Ohio it State. wasn't there hey, 20 man. years ago, but it, it's there now. <laughs> they was running that thing from, uh, yeah. a while back, right? Yeah. But, uh, man, we just got great coaches, and it's, it's a competitive atmosphere. You know, it's one of them things where, um, you know, if you're a receiver and you commit to Ohio State, we know that you're not running from competition. You know, you know we know that you a dog. You trust in your ability to stand out among a, uh, a group of good players. And, and uh, you know, you're going to get better once you get there. You know, the, with being around the people that's in the room, the competitive nature of it, and, and Coach Harline, Coach Day, the, how they uh, incorporate, you know, receivers in their offense, you know, it's a special place to be right now. First two receivers, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, they have 1,000 yards their rookie year coming from the same school. JSN about to come in in rec shop yeah. this year. Oh, yeah. And, of course, Marvin Harrison Jr. And if you right. want, you can still claim Jamison Williams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That, that room was something. You know, it was. <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, Mike and I have known each other for a long time. And we used to uh, we used to spend way too much time playing Madden, way too much time. But the standard you said used to. Okay, <laughs> all, right. all right, yeah. But the standard was for turn. We always go for turnarounds, so we go for a franchise that you know is a long way away, and then yeah. we're like, okay, we'll we'll turn this franchise around. Yeah. It says something that the Jets are not that franchise. If we're playing mad right yeah. now, we, y'all too easy. It's too easy. Yeah. It's they too got easy you. Because, <laughs> because <laughs> as you said, uh, better days are ahead. 
but there is a pass with the Jets. How did you deal with that coming in? It had nothing to do with you. Probably a lot of cynicism, maybe from the fan base, maybe some uh, remnants of it in the building. How did you deal with, hey, this is different. I'm different. I come from a winning program, and I'm trying to turn this around, yeah. be a part of it. How did no, you, like uh, you said, I came from a winning program, and, and that started in high school and college. And, and um, you know, the other dudes we brought in did as well. And, and I think they've been trying to build that up around the facility, getting the right guys that, that know how to win, know what it takes. And, and know that you know when we do win, it's not it's no fluke. You know, it's we we're really we're we're that. You know, we're here, and um, I feel like we've been doing a good job incorporating that in the facility. You know, I know they put a lot on us as rookies to to try and change that culture and, and be involved with that. And I feel like we did a pretty good job with it. But um, yeah, you know, it's real. Like you said, it is real. And the fans, the fans, and um, you know, the people around the building sometimes that aren't players, you can feel it sometimes. But um, you know, when we were winning at the start of the season, we knew it was because of how good we were, not because of the flu, like I said. And and um, it's just bringing that winning, winning mindset, knowing what it takes and going about it during the week. You know, it's not just going to happen, knowing that you have to put in that work to, to get to that point. What so, was your biggest challenge dealing with the quarterback situation, especially later in the year? Yeah, um, honestly, man, I, I, I simplified it with myself. You know, I, I knew it was a real thing, and, and I'm lying if I said I didn't see the reports that came out and, you know, whatever it may be. But, um, you know, for me, it was, it was just catching the ball. You know, this is what I've been doing since I was a young kid. And, and um, at the end of the day, it's football. You know, go out there and catch whoever throws and throws it at you. Um, I mean, I mean, the only difference, you know, I'll say there was was during the practice week. You know, it was based on different thing, based on um, the game plan, based on who was behind center. You know, that was the only thing that was a little different. But as far as going out there and playing, you know, I was just doing my job, man. Well, listen, part of your job is recruiter. You know that. You've been having some fun on, on Instagram yeah. uh, with Aaron Rodgers, who we understand is taking uh, what he calls a darkness retreat to decide his future. <laughs> uh, you've made no secret of, of, of how cool it would be to play with Aaron Rodgers. What is your pitch? You got a chance to talk to Aaron Rodgers. What are you telling him about uh, coming to New York? I'm telling him how close we are. I'm telling him we're right there. Um, you got a chance to, to finish your career in the biggest city where they haven't done it before. They haven't won in a while um, since the 60s. So, so, you know, that's my pitch to him. You could put that 12 on. I think we retired it, actually. But you can bring it out for yeah, him, though. Yeah, yeah, if you get think, Aaron Rodgers. I think, I think Joe might be okay hey, with Joe that. Said, so Joe said, he, he, Joe he said, said he's it? cool with it. He, he actually cool came yeah. on the record. He's yeah. like, I'm good. Yeah. We, 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 you can have hey, 12. It's been so long. I bet he is, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, man, that would be my pitch to him. You know, take that 12 out of retirement and, and let's do something special, you know? If Rodgers doesn't come, what about another number four? Oh, yeah. What do you think of Carl? Hey, I'm cool with I'm cool with that too, man. I'm cool. With, honestly, I trust in our in our uh, facility that, or that, that they'll do the right thing in our uh, organization. So, for me, like I said, you know, I don't try to worry about it too much. I see it. I'm not gonna lie. I see it all, you know. And I and I got some players, you know, I want got in mind. But but for me, I'm gonna come in and, and uh, put in the work regardless. You know, whoever, no matter who's on the center. Is there another name we haven't mentioned that you're thinking about that you're targeting? Um, nah, not no one specific. Okay. I'm not targeting anyone okay. specifically. If I see someone out here that you know, is on the market, you know, I might say something. But okay. I ain't going listen, out my way as of right you, now. You, you ended up yourself on recruiting too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Listen, right come though. throw to me. What more could you want? That's you know smooth with it, though. That's smooth with it. Like, look, I don't, nobody in mind, but if I see somebody, you know, like, <laughs> hey, I might, I might have to say something. Well, listen, uh, you guys have a bright future Thank in you. large part because of players like you, man. Congratulations. Enjoy the week. Good luck Thursday night and, uh, and moving forward, man, on an Thank amazing so career. Much. Great start. Appreciate that, man. And Sorry. come back anytime, man. We've had, this is like visit number two. You can go at three, you gotta, four, you five. Gotta, you got to hey. hit it with him. Hit it with hey, him. I-O-H. I-O. Uh, there it is. My dog. <laughs> Still. Yes, sir. Still. <laughs> hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.